endureth forever. It's always good. Amen. And uh, just good to be in the presence of the Lord this morning. A couple of announcements that we have today. Uh, on June the 21st, we will be leaving for youth camp in Hot Springs, Arkansas. And uh, tomorrow is our deadline on pre-registration. So if you have anybody in your family that is thinking of going, we have to know today. And uh, so things are being done a little differently this year. And also, too, we need to prepare for arrangements for the transportation. So, uh, so please uh, let me know today if you are going. Uh, also, on June the 5th, there will be a yard sale uh, here at the church. That's this coming Friday. It's a youth fundraiser. Uh, for the camp, and then also on the 13th, there will be a uh, bake sale at Walmart, and we're asking for you to please uh, bring donations. And, uh, and so please let somebody know if you're preparing or planning to bring something. Let's not wait till the very last minute. Uh, we need donations for the yard sale, and uh, these are to help our children, amen, and uh, our youth. We want to sow into our youth because one day they're going to be leading uh, our churches. And uh, so we want them to be filled with the power of God and uh, be filled up, ready to receive what God has for them. And youth camp is always a, a wonderful experience, a lifetime experience. Uh, I remember uh, going to youth camp. That was my favorite time of the year. Now it seems like it's a difficult time to get children even interested in going because we have everything and we, uh, just like the, the majority of society today, we push God on the back burner and we do everything else that we want to do first. And uh, it's hard to get kids even interested in camp these days. When I was a child, it didn't matter if it was 100 degrees outside or not. I would stay outside all day long. And uh, But you know something, my most favorite part of camp was at 7 p.m. in the evenings because I was always ready to receive what God had for my life. It was fun during the day having fun, but I'm going to tell you, I can remember some wonderful times in camp meetings. I, I remember uh, as a child, maybe 10 years old, I don't remember exactly, but probably around 10 years of age, I stayed in the, I was one of the last ones to leave service that night at about 11 or 12 o'clock at night. I don't remember the time still speaking in tongues, just letting the Lord uh, move upon my life. They had to carry me to my bed in my dorm room at 10 years old. Amen. We need some moving of God like that again in our churches in our day and time. We've become lackadaisical in our ways with God. We have put God on the back burner. We have put God as second best, third best, fourth best, wherever our priorities line up. We do what we want to do first. I always say that people do everything they want to do. Uh, if, you know, if we want to be in the house of God, we'll be in the house of God. Uh, if we want to do the things of God, we'll do the things of God. We do things that we want to. We prioritize our lives. If you don't believe it, look at your bank account, look at your checkbook, and you'll figure out pretty quickly where your priorities are in life. It doesn't take very long. And uh, we need to put God as our first priority in life again. Amen. There's coming a day, the Bible said that when every knee and every tongue is going to bow to that name, and for some, it's going to be too late. It's going to be too late because time will have already wrapped up and, and uh, the church will have already been called out. But everybody that has ever lived is going to try to bow to that name. Elvis Presley, he's going to try to bow to that name. Everybody that has ever lived you know something, the reason I said Elvis Presley is because we call him the king. He's not the king. Jesus is the king. They call LeBron James the king. He's not the king. Jesus is the king. There's only one king, and his name is Jesus. Amen. Of all the kings in other countries, they're not kings. They might be kings of their land, but there's going to come a day when they're going to bow down to, to that wonderful name of Jesus. Every person, and uh, we might as well... Uh, make it right with the Lord today. Amen. So let's sow into our children. If you would like to sponsor a child, uh, we have had one person that has came forward and sponsored, and we do appreciate that sponsorship. Uh, and if there is anyone else that would like to sponsor, please feel free to do that. You are blessing uh, a child. So uh, also this afternoon is graduation. Uh, Logan Stevenson and, and uh, Connor is 
is going to be graduating tonight. So if where are the both of them, if you all will uh, come up, please. We've got a card for you. Come up, Logan. Come on up here, Connor. Isn't Connor doing an awesome job on the drums? <laughs> doing a fabulous, fabulous job. And, and uh, we're so proud of these two that are, are going to be graduating today. A wonderful experience for them. And uh, this is a turning point and a changing point in the both of their lives because things will never be the same again. Um, you know, when we, some t we, we often realize how good we had it made when we lived at home, don't we? I, re I remember a story of Mark Twain that said when he was 16 years old, his dad didn't know anything. But by the time he turned 21, it was amazing how much his dad had learned. And uh, you know something? You, you can't wait to leave home and you can't wait to get out of home and go to college or whatever it is you do. But a few years after you're out, you realize how, how well you had it when you were at home with your parents or your grandparents or whomever uh, may have been there for you. And uh, you know, these two are going to begin a new life adventure. And, and I just wanna give them both a card today of appreciation don't have to open those now you can open them when you go back but I do want to if we can all just extend our hands this way and I want to pray over the both of them this morning dear Heavenly Father God we come before you in prayer Lord for both Connor and Logan today as they begin new adventures in their life I ask God that you would protect them that you would guide them and lead them Lord as they as they enter new adventures and new opportunities and new challenges and, and uh, new challenges Amen. Wonderful new adventure. Also this morning we want to remember uh, Scott, that's Will and Sheila's son that um, used to play the drums. Some of you may remember him. He's going in for surgery uh, in the morning, a rather extensive surgery on his back and, and hip and so forth. And, and uh, So we want to remember him in prayer this morning. So can we just bow right now very quickly and let's say a word of prayer over Scott. Dear Heavenly Father, Today, in Jesus' name, we just pray over Scott, Lord, as he will uh, be going in for surgery in the morning. I ask and pray, God, your blessings to be upon him. I pray, Lord, that you would bless the hands of the surgeons. I ask, God, that you would just uh, let everything go well. Let, let this surgery be a success. And I ask and pray, Lord, that after the surgery, God, that he can have a quick recovery, that he can get back to doing what he needs to be doing, back to work or whatever it is he needs to do in life. And I just ask and pray, Lord, that this surgery would be successful. And, God, that you would help him through this time. And, uh, God, after the surgery, that everything will be okay. won't have continuing of, of uh, pain and problems, Lord. But let this take care of it, Lord, we ask and pray. You're our great physician. And, uh, God, we just turn it over to you today. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Can we all say amen? Amen. Well, how many of you know that God is good? He's a good God. He's a wonderful God. It is good to see everybody this morning. A few of you that uh, are here this morning, it's good. We haven't seen you for a while, and it's just good to see you this morning. And, 
and uh, we hope you enjoy the service and will come back and uh, be with us again. I want to talk to you this morning uh, from the book of Jeremiah, chapter number 1. And we're going to begin in verse number 4. How many of you know that ever since the day that you were born, the devil has been set out to destroy your life? Amen? He is set out to destroy your life. He wants to destroy everything that is good in your life. He wants to destroy your relationship with Christ. He wants to destroy your relationship with your spouse. He wants to destroy your relationship with, with your loved ones and your siblings. And He wants to destroy every good thing that God has put into your life. In fact, the Bible said that that is the mission statement of the enemy, is that he has come to steal to kill and to destroy. That is his mission. That's what he was uh, designed for, basically. I mean, if you want to look at it in that fashion, that's, that's why he is in the world, is to seek and to destroy and to, to steal, to kill, to rob, and to destroy everything that God wants to build up good in your life. That's why that when you come into relationship with God, some people think that when you come and accept Jesus into your life and you're living for Him, that everything is just going to be a bed of roses after that. No more problems, no more trials, no more situations, no more circumstances, that, that God's just going to uh, take care of everything and my life is just all of a sudden going to be a straight road with no more curves and no more obstacles and, and no more things to go through. But that is very far from the truth. In fact, once you come to relationship with Jesus Christ is the very moment that all, all hell will try to break loose in your life because the enemy wants to try to destroy your relationship with God. When you come to the altar and you, you feel like you've received something from God, maybe uh, you haven't been living for God and, and uh, you come to the altar and you maybe accept Jesus into your heart once again or maybe you just come back to relationship with Jesus Christ, the old dirty devil will be on your heels and he will be trying to, to put things into your mind and into your spirit trying to maybe uh, put condemnation into your life, trying to tell you that you're not good enough and maybe you're not capable, you're not strong enough, you don't have the willpower, you can't do this, you can't do that. But there is a Christ that the Bible said that His mission was that I have come to give life and I have come to give it more abundantly. Now the devil came to kill, to steal, and to destroy, but Jesus came to give life and to give it more abundantly. And so while the devil is trying to kill everything that is good in your life, Jesus is speaking into your life and He is coming to you and He is saying, I have come to give you life, I have come to give you joy, I have come to give you peace, I have come to give you love. I have come to give you all of these attributes. But the devil is roaming like a roaring lion, the Bible said, seeking whom he may devour. So don't you think that just because you come into relationship with Jesus Christ that everything's just going to be okay and everything's always going to just go like a bed of roses and everything's just going to always be a straight road and without crooked paths because that is far from the truth of the Word of God. In fact, men and women that lived in the Bible that were the greatest of influences in the Bible Bible, they went through many things in their lives. You look at the story of David. The Bible said that David was a man after God's own heart, and yet he committed some serious crimes and some, some serious uh, failures and sins in his life, yet he was the man after God's own heart, which tells me that we are going to go through things in life, that, that we're going to face challenges and seasons and, and trials and circumstances and situations in life. But the Bible said that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. In Romans 8 and verse 31 it said, If God be for me, then who can be against me? Ladies and gentlemen, I don't care what weapon has been formed against me, it cannot prosper through the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Can somebody give God praise in this house? From your mother's womb, Satan tried to kill you and try to have you aborted. Satan tried to somehow keep you down so that you would never have a relationship with God. Satan somehow tried to keep, your, keep you under his feet so that you would never rise up and become everything that Christ wanted you to be. 
And so right now the enemy is doing his very best to destroy your walk with God, to destroy the church and destroy to destroy the people of God because he doesn't want us to cut loose and begin to give God glory. You see, the enemy doesn't care if you come to church if you never receive. The enemy doesn't care if you come to church if you never praise. The enemy doesn't care if you come to the house of God if you never worship. But you begin to worship God and you begin to edify Him and you begin to lift up His name and you begin to to worship God. That's when the enemy doesn't like it. That's what the enemy doesn't want because he sees a child of God that is being brought up and is becoming everything that God has called them to be. When we begin to worship Worship God through our experiences and through our challenges. The enemy gets scared. The enemy begins to get worried. And the Bible said that the enemy has to flee when we begin to call upon the name of Jesus. I don't know about you this morning, but I am thankful to know that I know that name that is above every name. His name is Jesus. He is our Lord. He is our Savior. And He is our King. In Jeremiah chapter number 1, beginning in verse number 4, it said, Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest out from the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. And then said I, O Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. Now listen, Jeremiah is saying, God, I don't know what you're talking about. You have called me since I was in my mother's womb. You have called me to be a prophet unto the nations. But Jeremiah says, God, I don't understand because I cannot speak. I don't have the capabilities to do those things. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all the land or all that I send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, Thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. And then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See in verse 10, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down and to build up and to plant. God said, I have the power through me. I can pull down. I can pull up. I can destroy. I can throw down. I can build. I can plant. The book of Ecclesiastes 3 says there is a time to plant, there is a time to die, there is a season for everything. And God is saying unto us this morning, yes, you may not have the capabilities. Yes, you might feel like you don't have the abilities. Yes, you might feel like you can't do this and you can't do that. But God is saying unto us this morning that when I have called you to do something, I have equipped you with the power to do it because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. If God calls you to do a ministry, then step out and do the ministry. Do what God has called you to do. Maybe you don't have the finances. Maybe you don't have the abilities. Maybe you say, I don't have the power to speak and I can't do this. I'm afraid. I can't do that. God said do it. And if God calls you to do it, then God will equip you with the power to make it happen. I'm reminded when I first started preaching, it it was a terrible fear for me to get up in front of people and speak. It was not something that was of myself at all. I was not able to do that. In fact, in the classroom, if I was ever called upon to answer a question, I would just about fall under my seat because I didn't want to raise my hand because I was always afraid. What if I didn't know the answer? What if I got it wrong? Or or what if I didn't do it right? I always had a fear. and There was a fear on my life of, of getting up in front of people and speaking, but I remember back in 1997 when my dad was suffering from a heart condition and and he was having a hard time getting up and preaching because of his health and and he came home one Sunday and and he sat down in the recliner and and he called a couple of preachers and tried to get them to come for the Sunday night service and and they were not able to come because they didn't have somebody to replace them and and come to the church and and take my dad's place and so they could not come and, and I remember that Sunday afternoon I said dad would you like for me to speak tonight 
he about fell out of his chair because he knew that that was not me at all. And you know something? I had a fear that was on my life, but yet I knew that God was calling me to do something. I had not been saved or, or reconverted for maybe a month or six weeks at that time. I had just came back into relationship with Jesus Christ, and, and I said, do you want me to do it tonight? And, and he about fell out of his seat. And uh, so that Sunday night, I, I went and I, and I spoke, and I'm, I'm sure that some of you that were, were here at that time, you remember that, and and I had fear and, and I had worry because I didn't know what I was going to talk about or what I was going to say or, or how I was going to do it or how I was going to come up with the words or, or what I was going to do. All I knew that it was that God had called me and God had said, I want you to speak tonight. It had to be God that put it into my spirit because there was no way that I would have ever done that on my own. And you know something, it's still a fear that is up on my life. But when I come under the anointing of God and I come under the presence of God, I can remove all the faces and I can, I can get beyond all the things because God is greater that liveth on the inside of me than everything that can come against me, than every mountain that can come into my life. My God is greater. You see, you, when, what happens is when you get closer to God than you have ever been. Satan will begin to tug on your soul so hard that you can feel the pressure of hell trying to stop you. In the book of Romans chapter number 13 in verse 11 through 14 it said, and that now knowing the time, that now is the high time to awaken out of sleep. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to awaken out of sleep. We need to awaken out of our slumber. It says, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and in envying. But in verse 14 it says, put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to tell you, you might be in a mess right now in your life, but as I have preached in this house before, God can take a mess and He can turn it into a message. God can take a mess that you are going through in your life and He can give you a testimony. God can take a mess that you're going through this morning and He can turn it into a message. He can take your mess of unbelief and turn it into a message of faith. He can take drug addiction and turn it into a message of deliverance if you came from a broken home this morning God can take you and he can use you for deliverance he can take a broken marriage and turn it into a message of hope and a message of restoration right now you need to believe that God is bigger than every circumstance that I am going through in life that God is bigger than your dilemma that, that hell is raging and hell is mad you need to understand that the power of God liveth on the inside of you. We need to wake up as children of God and we need to understand that I am a blood-bought child of God. I am a child of the Most High King. Hallelujah! If I can ever make us understand or make you understand how powerful you really are, there will be no stopping you from prayer. There will be no stopping you from outreach. There will be no stopping you from accomplishing things that God wants to do. You say, I can't give a Bible study or I can't pray for the sick or I, I can't witness to the lost because I don't know what to say and I don't know what to do. You've got to get that verse in your scripture that says, I can do all things through Jesus Christ who gives me strength. It might not be my personality to walk up to somebody and say, do you know Jesus and to witness to them? But you know Know something I can do all things through Jesus Christ who gives me strength it's time to arise to the occasion it's time to set our eyes on the dreams for tomorrow and stop living in the defeat of the past see we are children of the most high God 
And in 1 John chapter 4 and verse 4 it says, Ye are of God, little children, and you have overcome them, for greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. We need to wake up and start having a soul revival, a soul winning revival that we've been waiting on and talking about. We need to have miracles that we've been hearing about across the world. We need to see lost mamas and lost daddies and, and lost brothers and sisters and etc. And, and everybody else. We need to see them come to relationship with Jesus Christ because God can take the worst situation that we are going through in life and he can turn it around he's the God of the turnaround he can take somebody that is a nobody and turn them into a somebody you say a somebody what do you mean I'm not a somebody yes you are you're a somebody because you're a child of the king you're a child of the most high God you were a nobody but because of God you became a somebody it's not because of my abilities it's not because of my power but it's by the spirit and the power of a living God that liveth on the inside of me. God can take the worst situation. He can turn it around. You say, I'm having problems on my job. If you're a child of God, God can turn it around, and God can even give you a raise through it. He can take a lost child, and He can save that child. God can take the worst of the worst and make it the best of the best. God is waiting on us to believe. I refuse to believe the dilemma. I refuse to fall down in the dilemma. I refuse to fall down in the what ifs and the why nots. I refuse to fall down in the pit. I refuse to fall down and let the enemy stamp stomp on my head I'm going to wake up I'm going to wake up and I'm going to say that this is the day the Lord has made I'm going to rejoice I'm going to be glad in it I'm not going to fear I'm not going to worry I'm going to cast all those things aside because the peace of God liveth within me can we give him praise God is waiting for you to believe this morning. You don't have to get down in yourself and discover your own greatness. You need to discover the greatness in the Holy Ghost. We need to understand that the Holy Ghost is the power of God within us. God in us is the hope of glory. We can't let God's dream for us die because His dream for us is what we've always got to be reaching for. His dream for us is to come where He is. There is too much greatness inside of you for you to just sit back and be defeated by the devil. Now, I'm talking about Christians this morning. I'm talking about those that are living for God. You sit back and you let the de devil defeat you day after day. You let him throw things upon you and you just let the devil dig you in a pit. We need to wake up and realize that I can throw the devil under my feet. I can stomp on his head. I can put him under my feet is the song that we sing. We need to go to the enemy's camp and we need to take back everything that the devil has stolen from us. Some of you, he's got your children. We need to take them back and we need to declare them in the name of Jesus. Some of you, he's got your spouse. We need to claim them and we need to take a hold of them and claim them in the name of Jesus. Some of you, he has put sickness upon your body and you have accepted it to be okay. You are a child of God and you can rise up and you can look at that sickness and you can say, I'm still going to worship God. I'm still going to praise God. I'm still going to lift up God. The devil cannot get me down. I'm going to worship him through my experience. Hallelujah. I'm going to wake up. Some of us need to wake up. Hallelujah. You are a powerful, anointed child of the Most High God. And the scripture said, I am more than an overcomer. God didn't just call me to just get by in life. He didn't call me to just be status quo. 
He called me to be something bigger than that, to be something more than that. He has called us to be something bigger than what we sometimes are. I'm reminded of a story of a little fish or a little, a little frog. That little frog was out there in that well and it was jumping around in the well and one day it decided I'm going to climb out of this well and I'm going to see what's over the top of that well. And he climbs up out of that well and he jumps over the top and goes out a little ways and he finds a pond. And he thought, my goodness, what I've been missing all my life. I've been living in that little well while God had this big pond out here for me. And so he lives in that pond for a little while and then his imagination begins to explore again and he begins to go out a little further. And all of a sudden, he comes upon this big lake, this big giant lake, and he says, my goodness, I was living in a well. God took me to a pond and I thought that that was really good. Now look at this big lake that God has given me. And so he lives in that lake for a little while and he thinks that's the biggest there is to offer. And he decides to roam out a little more and all of a sudden he finds the ocean, the limitless ocean waters. And he thinks, my God, I lived in that little pond for all those years. And then I moved, or that little well for all those years. And then I moved on to the pond. And then I went on to the river. And now I've got the abundance of this big ocean. You see, some of us are living in a little well today while God wants us to reach out and to explore and find the ocean. While we sit and we just think this is all that God has and this is all that God has to offer, God is saying to us, get out of your comfort zone. Get out of that little well and begin to discover all the great things that I have for your life. God has bigger dreams for every one of us. You say, you see the difference in a dream and, and something that is not a dream is if it is bigger than you are, then it's a dream from God. Because a dream from God will be so big that you can't do it on your own. You can't make it happen on your own. You can't build it on your own. You can't do it on your own. Because there won't be finances to make it happen. Maybe you feel like you don't have the abilities to make it happen. When it's a dream from God, it will be so big that it will cause you to live in faith and trust in God in knowing that I'm not doing it by my own strength. But I'm living and doing a dream for God. I don't know about you, but I want to be a dreamer. I want to be an envisionary. I want to see things that God wants to do. I want to see things that God wants to pour out. I don't want to be stuck in that little well while God wants to pour inside of me an ocean. And God wants me to see the bigness and the big things that He wants to do. While we sit around and arguing about little bitty things, there's souls that need to be saved. There's souls that need a relationship with Jesus Christ. We need to quit bickering and fighting over little things, little minute things that really don't even matter, that don't amount to a hill of beans in the kingdom of God and start casting our minds and our imaginations on things that are going to last, things that are eternal, and things that are not temporal. Hallelujah. In Romans chapter 13 it said, and that now knowing the time, that now is the time to awake out of sleep, for now is your salvation nearer than when you believe. In verse 12 it said, The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us, let us therefore cast all the works of darkness, cast them off, and let us put on the armor of life. As we return to the music this morning, it's time for the church to realize who we are in Jesus Christ. We are anointed of God. We have the anointing of God. I don't know about you, but I want more of the anointing of God. 
I'm not interested in a church that doesn't have any anointing. I'm not interested in, in people that's not interested in the anointing of God. I want a move of the mighty God. I want the presence of God. I want to feel the Spirit of God. We have a commission in Matthew 28. It said, To go ye therefore into all the world and to preach the gospel. We have been commissioned to heal the sick. We have been commissioned to cast out devils. We have an okay from God to do these things. We have the power of God living on the inside of us through the Holy Ghost to be witnesses in our city and to go out into our city and to see our city saved by the power of Jesus Christ. In Hebrews 11 in verse 6, as I close, it says, But without faith it is impossible to please Him. For he that comes to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder to them who diligently seek Him. Without faith it is impossible to please God. You've got to have faith this morning. You see, God always took the least of all humanity to accomplish His will. You look at David. David was a 16-year-old boy. He's getting ready to face a giant. The Israelites are out there and they're scared. Who has the power to go up against a 9-foot, 300-pound giant? And little David, 16 years old, he steps up and he says, I don't understand what you're scared of. I don't understand why you're so scared. David was just a little runt of a boy, 16 years old, small in stature, the Bible said. But you know something? It wasn't his ability. It wasn't his power. He had God living on the inside of him. Greater is he that is in David than he that is in the world. And he stepped up against that giant and he said, I come against you, not with a spear and a sword, but he said, I come against you in the name of the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, you want to defeat giants out of your life this morning? Quit fighting in a physical way and begin to fight it in a spiritual way. Paul wrote and he said that we are in spiritual warfare. We are in spiritual combat. We can't fight the enemy physically. He will whip us. We've got to fight him spiritually. Spiritual warfare. Not with hydrogen and oxygen. Not with those things, but with the Spirit of God. As we stand in this building this morning, what God wants to do is He wants to take ordinary people just like you and just like me. In the Scripture, He took farmers and fishermen and, and tax collectors and harlots. You say, harlots? Yeah. He took harlots to spread the Word of God. He changed their life. He set them on a new path. What he did is he took what looked like a mess and turned it into a message. He took people that looked like there was no hope and he turned it into a message because it's a testimony of Jesus Christ. I don't know where you stand this morning, but I do want to assure you that God has bigger dreams for your life than you've ever imagined. God wants to do things through your life that you never thought you were capable of doing. That you never thought you could do. But you've got to realize, it's not me. It's God that liveth on the inside of me. And God has given me the dream and God has given me the vision. And so I'm going to reach for it. I'm going to tread to the oceans. I'm going to get out of the well. And I'm going to move to higher ground. He can take you, me, and anyone else that He pleases to fulfill His will for this day and time because there is nothing that is impossible if you will only believe. Do you have the power to believe this morning? Are you a believer this morning? Do you believe what I've spoken on this morning? Do you believe that it's true? Do you believe that it's real? Do you believe that we're capable of being what God has called you to be, then we need to quit falling and laying down and let the enemy beat our heads up. And we need to rise up and become everything that he's called us to be. Depression, be depressed no more. Oppression, be oppressed no more. 
Sickness, be gone in the name of Jesus. Confusion, get out of my life. I'm not accepting it. I need a child. I, need, I got a child that needs saved. I need to begin to speak life over them. Don't speak they'll never come back to God or you don't believe they'll ever know God again. Don't speak negativity over their lives. You just keep on speaking the power of God. Keep on speaking the blessings of God and knowing that they're going to receive and they're going to come back into relationship with Jesus Christ. We're going to praise and we're going to worship Him. And this morning, this altar is going to be open. I don't know what you need this morning, but this altar is open if you will only believe. Let's pray, let's sing, let's worship, and let's give God praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Jeremiah said it's like a fire. Jeremiah Hallelujah. said it's like a fire. Jeremiah said it's like a fire. Jeremiah said it's like a fire. Shut up in my bones. Shut up in my bones. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up in my bones. Makes me want to dance. Hallelujah. Makes me want to sing. Makes me want to shout all about it. Shout all about it. Shout it to Jesus is King. Jeremiah said it's like a fire. 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 Shut up in my bones. Shut up in my bones. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up in my bones. Makes me want to dance. Makes me want to sing. Makes me want to shout all about it. Shout all about it. Shout it that Jesus is King. Can't stop praising His name. I just This can't altar stop. is open this morning praising if you want to come and I worship Him. Hallelujah.
to get to a place where you just don't want to stop praising his name. If you're not to that place, I encourage you to get to that place where you just can't stop giving him praise. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you in this house this morning. God, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your word. I pray that your word has been received this morning for you have said that it should not or will not return void. I pray that somebody's heart has been challenged by your word this morning. At least one person, I ask and pray. God, we love you. We thank you. We give you praise in this house. And it's in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you this morning. Good to see everybody in Jesus' name.